Step two. You can't wake up one day and think, I'm going to be a superhero in cred. It's not how it works. It's like way, way more complicated than that. It's a process. But the thing about processes is that you can't just pick some big pie in the sky goal and then, you know, charge forward to that without any real direction. That's something that I do all the time in my personal life and in general. And I hate it because I just like unfocused and I wander into stuff and I fail horribly because I don't have a practical understanding of what I need to get done and I don't have clear steps to get there. So I decided to start even more simply than building a plan for my goal. I decided to start with clarity. I need to get clear and focused in my head about how I want to move forward. So to that end, I came up with a scheme. It's got two prongs to it. Prong one, do good stuff. Now, this is not exactly the most complicated plan in the entire world, but when you're having a lot of bad days, it's more complicated than you'd think. So this one is more about what I do and four areas in my life that I feel like I can improve to get better mental clarity and make it easier to focus in on my goals. First of all, I need to sleep. Sleep is good. Pretty much everyone says that. And I don't feel like actually doing any real research, so I'm just going to blindly trust them because I feel better when I sleep good. So I need to sleep consistently and I need to sleep well. That means very strict bedtimes that are consistent and no more falling in asleep in front of the screen or whatever because, you know, you don't want to think about your problems laying awake in bed at night so, you know, you flop down on the couch and watch TV until you fall asleep. But that's not healthy and it doesn't give you good quality sleep. So I need to sleep in the dark and I need to sleep regularly and well. Next up, I need to eat. There's all the stuff that people put out there about how you need to, you know, eat so much of this and macronutrients and all this other stuff. That's great. That's really great. But I need to start small because one of the things that I know about building a plan and building better habits is that you have to start with the little things. I can't just be perfect when I wake up tomorrow. That's not going to happen. So I'm going to start by just cutting out junk food. No sugary snacks, no chips. I want to eat food that I can recognize as something that probably came off a plant or an animal. Let's keep it real simple like that. I'm not going to be too concerned about how much I eat of different things. I'm just going to try to eat when I'm hungry and not eat junk food. Okay. Next up is drinking. I'm going to drink water. And I'm going to drink black coffee, and that's going to be it. Being sober is good. I don't want to run from my problems anymore, so I don't want to drink. I feel like that's pretty straightforward. Lastly, I need to make sure that I'm exercising consistently. Now, I've exercised some in the past, and I try to make a habit of it. I've been getting better, but not great. I don't need to be some huge, bulky creature that's not really on my agenda list. So what I'm going to instead try to do is I'm just going to try to make sure that I do something that makes me sweat every day. Now, people are like, oh, you can't exercise every day. You can, you just got to shake it up and not do the same thing every day. Give yourself a chance to heal, switch it up. I'm not an expert on this particular subject, but I still feel like it's an important thing to do because I always feel better when I've exercised, so I think that needs to be on my list. Now, on to the second prong of this plan. Prong number two. This time, it's personal movie title joke. Never mind. So, I feel like having a plan is good, but you also need to have, like, oversight and feedback. So, I've made a list of red flags that are things that I tend to notice correlate to me being in a depressive episode. So, if I'm really bummed out or something, I can... If I'm really bummed out, I tend to fall into patterns of behavior that aren't super good for me. And I feel like if I focus more on the stuff that I do, then I can let myself know, okay, you're having a bad time. And if I can do that, then I can get out in front of it and I can focus more on sticking to my daily goals of eating better and sleeping better and things like that. It will help me get out of my depressive episode. And then I can try to 
ward that off. Now, I don't have the best coping mechanisms for things like this, but I need to try. So, red flags. Uh, these are things that I have noticed tend to happen when I'm really depressed. Uh, so, number one, have I been sticking to my goals? Have I been trying really hard to keep consistent on everything that I listed in prong one? If I haven't, that might be a red flag. Have I been binging, eating an entire pizza, or drinking way too much? Those are things that I'll do if I'm really depressed. So if I notice habits like that, and like, oh no, that means I'm probably having a depressive episode, then I can work on trying to come up with a healthier coping mechanism than just filling my face with stuff. Number three, talking. Now, I don't have like a huge social circle, but I have some people that I like. And I've noticed that sometimes I'll drop out of touch for like a month or two, or I won't be as communicative as I should be with them, and that damages my relationships, and it's usually a sign that I have something wrong in my head. So if I try to stay in consistent touch with people that I care about and notice when I haven't been staying in touch with them, I think that's a really good way to assess whether or not I'm having a bad time. Number four is procrastination. When I'm stoked and ready to go and enthusiastic about life, it's really easy to not procrastinate because then like, yeah, let's get stuff done. You know, that's, that's good. But in general, when I start procrastinating more, it usually means that I'm getting a bit depressed or down about something. And that's one of those things that I really want to keep an eye out for. So procrastination is on the list. Over here, we have, am I cleaning specifically my bedroom or my house? It's one of those things that I've noticed where it's like caring about yourself. If you don't care about yourself, a lot of the times that's part and parcel of being depressed. So that's one of the ones that I really notice. When my room is a sty, when my bed isn't made, when the house is dirty, it usually means that I'm really bummed out. So if I keep things clean, it sort of forces me to take care of myself and regard myself well. The same goes for point six and point seven. These are both about personal hygiene, because, you know that thing of, like, oh, I'm feeling really bad, I don't want to, I don't want to care about myself today. Then you don't shave, you don't shower, you don't do the things that you have to do that are going through the motions of caring about yourself. So, if I make sure that I shave regularly and I shower regularly, that's one of those things where you're spending time with yourself, and you're taking care of yourself, and that tends to make you feel better about yourself. Plus, it's nice to not stink. People tend to like that, I've noticed. So, last but not least, number eight. Am I obsessing over failure? Now, this is a big one for me, because I have real issues with messing up, because life is complicated and messy, and I'm not going to be perfect about everything on the first list. I know that, but Sometimes I'll fall into a spiral where it's like, you can never do anything right, all you do is mess up, and one little mistake spirals into this huge depressive episode. So, I think understanding and accepting failure is a really important part of moving forward. Because a lot of the time, if you think carefully about why you failed, you can learn valuable lessons from that. And then try to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again, or things like that. Like, um, for example... I've had a lot of times where I've gone out to the bar with my friends, you go out, you have a drink, you have a couple too many drinks because you're feeling bad, and then you wake up at someone's house the next day, and you've just ruined your whole day because you're hungover, you're in some strange place, you got to get home, it turns into this whole thing, and then you've ruined your day, and you just spend your time kicking yourself, and it all starts with that little small mistake of going to the bar and having one too many. I'm not saying you can't hang out with people. I'm just saying you got to think about the consequences of your actions. That's one of the lessons that I learned along my way. So I did that by not obsessing over those failures. I did that by thinking carefully about how I got into the bad position that I was in. I don't think this system is complete. I don't think the system's perfect, but I think it's a start. And if I can do this and if I can learn from this system and then improve it and add more stuff to it and get more precise about what eating right or exercising right looks like to me, then 
I can start to build off of this small success. And I have to make sure that I don't, like, get too down about it if I mess up. The other thing is that I need to start keeping careful account of my progress and where I'm at and what I've been doing. That's actually part of the reason why I wanted to start making videos, is as a kind of oversight mechanism. This forces me to be accountable to something, even if I'm just accountable to a camera. So that's part of my impetus for this. I also need to journal regularly to keep track of progress on things like this. Uh, there are actually a lot of like great apps for your phone. I've used those in the past. I don't want to name anything in particular. So that's my first step. Well, technically my second step. That's my second step is I need to focus on day-to-day -day stuff that will improve my mental clarity and help me figure out how to move forward with a clear, well-thought-out plan.